The topic for this lesson is op amp gain and frequency response. The circuit shown consists of two cascaded stages, each having a gain figure of 100. Compared with a multi-stage op amp with four cascade stages, each with a gain figure of say 10, the above circuit displays more distortion and a narrower frequency response. Thus, huge gains with small levels of distortion can be established by cascading several low gain stages. The frequency response of a typical op amp operating open loop without any feedback is shown in this graph. At low frequencies, its gain is about 100,000. However, as the frequency is increased, the gain falls. For example, at 1 MHz, gain is equal to 1. With negative feedback, the gain of its op amp is larger than the imposed gain figure over a much greater range of frequencies. When gain is made smaller, frequency responses become correspondingly larger. An op amp characteristic called gain bandwidth product, or GBW, establishes the relationship between gain and frequency response. GBW is equal to the gain times the bandwidth, where the bandwidth is equal to the upper critical frequency minus the lower critical frequency. Since the lower critical frequency for an op amp is zero, bandwidth is equal to the upper critical frequency. For any op amp, GBW is a constant figure and therefore the bandwidth is equal to the GBW divided by the gain. Gain may then be expressed as the GBW divided by the bandwidth. The GBW can also be defined as the frequency at which the op amp's gain falls to 1. Let's look at an example. Assume an op amp has a GBW of 1 million and an open loop gain figure of 20,000. What is the open loop bandwidth? If negative feedback imposes a gain of 100 on the circuit, what will the bandwidth or frequency response be? And if we desire a bandwidth of 200 kilohertz, what would the gain need to be? The open loop bandwidth is equal to the GBW, 1 million, divided by the gain, 20,000, or 50 hertz. If negative feedback imposes a gain of 100 on the circuit, the bandwidth will be the GBW, 1 million, divided by the gain, now 100, or 10 kilohertz. If we desire a bandwidth of 200 kilohertz, the gain would be calculated by dividing the GBW of 1 million by the bandwidth 200 kilohertz, or 5. If multiple inputs are connected to the inverting terminal of an op amp, each through a separate resistor, the type of circuit is called a mixer or summing amplifier, and the output voltage, VO, is equal to minus the feedback resistance, R sub F, multiplied by the sum of the input voltages, divided by the value of one of the input resistances, assuming all the resistances, R sub I, have the same values. Thus, every input point receives the same gain as every other input, and as a result, all signals are amplified equally. The output is the sum of all the input signals. In the summing amplifier diagram shown, R sub F is equal to 250 kiloohms, and each input resistor is 10 kiloohms. What is the gain for each input? Each input will have a gain of minus the feedback resistor divided by the input resistance, or minus 25. When input resistance values are different, the circuit is called a weighted amplifier, and the output voltage, V sub O, is defined as the algebraic sum of the quantity minus the feedback resistance times each input voltage divided by the value of each input resistance. For example, if in a weighted amplifier, feedback resistance R sub F is equal to 200 kilo ohms, R sub I1 is equal to 20 kilo ohms, R sub I2 is equal to 40 kilo ohms, what gains would signals at input 1 and signals at input 2 receive? Using the equation for gain, signals at input 1 will receive a gain of 200 kilo ohms divided by 20 kilo ohms or minus 10. And signals at input 2 will receive a gain of 200 kilo ohms divided by 40 kilo ohms or minus 5. A difference amplifier is now shown. This circuit uses both input terminals in the difference mode and thus allows only two input points. Gain from the non-inverting input is 1 plus the feedback resistance divided by the input resistance. The non-inverting input's voltage divider will offer R sub F divided by the sum of R sub F plus R sub I times its signal source to the actual op amp input. The gain is then determined as in the equation shown. Thus, both inputs will receive the same effective gain so that the output will be a direct result of the difference between those two inputs. Using the previous figure, let's look at an example. Assume that both feedback resistors are 40 kilo ohms and both input resistors are 10 kilo ohms. If V sub 1 equals 2.5 volts and V sub 2 equals 0.5 volts, what is the output voltage V sub O? 
V sub O will be equal to the feedback resistor of 40 kilo ohms divided by the input resistance 10 kilo ohms multiplied by the quantity V sub 1 minus V sub 2 or 2.5 minus 0.5 or 8 volts.